come out and how does like you like into start doing Mozaco and stuff so um I've, at this point uh v's career is taking off sky's career has taken off and i was part of that whole uh ecosystem yeah and i'm thinking dog can I, you are a rapper and i'm google you be giving my first dm like dude what's the game I want to drop something. Mm. I need to drop something now. Mm. And I had, um, I was doing production. I had a PC, I had a scanner and a printer. Uh, shout out to my mom, Dukes. I was one of the few people that, like it was, you know, it was such a luxury back in the day to have it those It was, things. man. Yeah, so I, so I sat down and I, I go UB, getting off camp and I'm moving around Gabs because I don't want to stay at the house. Mm. Uh, you know how late thing and I know how when you rent, you find someone already renting that. And I go, you don't even know what the issues are in a few months you are kicked off. And I remember at this po- time I was staying go broad has day in a, with a family. Yeah. I'd rented a room in a family house. Yeah. <laughs> it was such, yeah. A, such a weird thing. Sure. And I found out for the uh Joe Joe Morris. Yeah. When uh, doesn't stay too far from where I stayed. Yeah. And he had like a legit studio. So I went to him sure. and I told him, Listen, yo, um, this is who I am. I, I have this concept. And for me, I'd studied the game. I'd 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 watched um I'd watched Homo Kavia O D R V and I was a part of it, mm. managed him. So I learned a lot of stuff about beyond hip hop. Yeah. And how people just but when I take in music and mm, listen to mm, music mm, mm, mm. and looking at Scar's career and knowing what he was doing at the time and Nukhali uh, Stag at the same time then he had his own yeah com- started and, coming and, off and, as and, well yeah yeah and, and during this time I, I, I meet Musako mm. and Musako and it's all about Mutuako mm. and I met Musako. all about at that yeah. time he was just like so I'm like okay yeah. cool so I was rapping in English and I was very comfortable rapping in English so I was thinking, and then Musak was always saying, "Oh, my nigga, if you can rap, that's a quite corner, but that's why." Yeah. So part of that influence came from it, MSK. It was, yeah, very yeah, influential. So, sure. so after watching the game, I'm like thinking, "Dog, when I don't know, everyone is this guy and Staga in terms of Botswana hip hop, and they're both rapping in English. Mm. If I need to come out different, I'd learned early on because you need to stand out. You need mm. to be, mm. you know, for you homo." And there was this song Komo Salapula where uh, during general cleaning would uh, my guys would always be singing this song. Mm. So I remember this song, so I'm like, dude. That was dope. I'm like, I need to turn that into a hip hop song. First year UB. Yeah. So that's like three, four years. You yeah. kinda had it in the back of your mind, like I yeah. need to turn that. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah. So I'm like, I need to turn that into a uh, into a song. Yeah. I'm just thinking of the hook. Yeah. When I, I was thinking <laughs> the most professional studio I know, Joe. Joe. So I went to Joe. I'm like, eh, Joe, can I give a I remember mm. how much he charged me. It was like oh, the, close to a thousand. Mm. I remember negotiating and telling. I think I negotiated down to about six hundred. I was like, wait, no, get that's still a lot of money back then. Back then, because that's eh, nowadays people don't understand. Mm. Like upcoming cats, yeah. access to the music industry is way easier than back in the day. Very easy, yeah. Uh, equipment is easily available. Like, Bokolo Bokolo guys had to get big mixers and hey, yeah. it was such, things yeah. were expensive. Yeah, it was crazy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, I, I remember, and I just said, listen, I'm going to sell my printer and scanner. I think com- combined, I got the 600 bucks. Mm. Like, I don't know. Uh, Here you go. I don't even think, I think I still owe Joe, actually. I think I gave him four. <laughs> if I do <laughs> okay, yeah. You gave him four hundred, and yeah. you're like, I, "I'm good for it." I even knew, I, I, I knew how I wanted the beat to sound like. Yeah, you know, I had already had a home. I told him with the way I am and Joe Daniela was there too. Now I've got Joe Morris, oh, so, so Joe remember, Daniela was the yeah. one actually play, pressing the keys. Yeah, at the home, I think I did melody. We made the beat. Then um, I was telling him, "Have no, you need what I'm I go tell her now." Uh, can you sing the chorus? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, hey, you know, he's like, oh, okay, hey, yeah, no. Dude, like, that guy was made for that song. I don't he know if you remember that song. I can hear hey. it. I remember it. Hey. He was, man. Hey. Obviously, he's like a natural, hey. gifted. Hey. With the beat, everything. Kind of, he's, he's the. That's him. Hey, Topo Dizile is influenced tonally, it's all from It's all from Really? The way I'm playing, I'm playing. 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 I'm play
That's crazy. If you listen, that's crazy. Listen yeah. to listen, listen to it. Listen to it. Yeah. Oh, tell her that this guy noticed what this worked and took that and put it back. And, oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. So we did the chorus and he was like, "Hey, yeah, yeah." Hip hop meets whatever. Um, uh, whatever it was. Then yeah. I did the verses. Kasakua, I'm just spitting. I'm like, "Shit, yeah. This thing is not." And he doesn't know why I'm complaining. I'm like, no. Because no. for him it was hey, for dope. For him it was dope. It was like, but nah. you're like, this guy doesn't stand out. Hey. Then I sat down and I wrote my first Mutoko verse. For real? Hey. Ever. The first time. Decided, In oh. studio. Hey. How long did that take you? It wasn't. It, I, I, I've never really taken long. But honestly, I still take longer. I still took, take longer to. When I. Commercial concepts for me, when I'm writing something commercial and watered down, yeah. I'll take fifty uh, percent longer than I'm doing like just spitting. Yeah, yeah. You, you understand? Yeah. But I, I sat there with Kwala K Kwala K Kwala when the I recorded the song, the kids I I dropped it off Koya Vnaf. I'm told them I'm dropping an album. But holo holo, yeah. no one will take you seriously if you just there was no drop a single. Hey, no. So I was telling them it's a lead single to my upcoming album. Okay. Yeah, mm. yeah. Hey. And I worked with Nefam, so Nikanali. Some connections, yeah, yeah, yeah some yeah, people yeah, are yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. Races. And luckily, dog, at the Loose Boy, I just love that song. Yeah. Loose Boy played that song more than anyone. Every time you, every time I had Anna, you know, Loose yeah. Boy was such a popular uh, personality. Mm. He would do his intro, and every time before, after his intro, he'd, most of the time he would play the song. Mm. And I started getting calls, and I'm like, this song is playing all over the place, and I was. Does, I, that, does it bring bookings? Dog, I was performing. Oh, wanna na that yeah uh BTV uh thing opening yeah, yeah. sequence. Yeah, I was part of that sequence. Yeah, tan tan tan. No, I part. You look on map. I was performing in Sangu. I think I remember that. Yeah, I yeah. think I remember that. The part yeah, of like yeah. an S curl or curve. Yeah, yeah, the yeah, S curl. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. And I would go on stage Kibi na. Yes. I had this intro at home, so I was, so yeah. I was very different. You know, rappers yeah. did not dance. I got a yeah. lot of flex for that. Yeah, you, dancing rapper. Yeah. You had the flex thing at that time. I think you had. When did you do? Mr. the UB um, yeah my first year go UB 2000 yes yeah, so at that time yeah 2001 you, you, I was Mr. Senjo yeah Mr. Senjo yeah, now you're yeah, yeah, Mr. UB, UB. you got that little dancing thing with the S curl one, I was uh, and I was model of the year 2001 and I remember Kileko like what okay what opened your mind to saying okay I can still do this other stuff like right now, now you're telling me you, you're managing an artist mm. You're making beats, mm. or at least to a point where you can yeah. be good. Then you are you're modeling, mm. and now you are like you are also rapping as well. Mm. You, you are open to trying more stuff. You're open to trying these new yeah. sounds. What gave you this open mindedness thing? Like where does that come from? I have no idea, fam. See, now the the fact that you're asking me that, mm. I'm I'm just starting to think about it now too. I'm asking myself the same exact question, but I've always I don't know I've always being that guy that would take or travel the the route that's less traveled, I've yeah. always wanted. For me, one of the first lessons I I learned when I got into the industry was standing out. Because mm. the, the biggest thing, the most important thing, is to be different mm. and to stand out and not to do what other people are doing. So, did somebody yeah. come to you and say, "Hey, can you do modeling? Can you do what doing competition for Mr. Singh?" Yeah, Joe? I was at the beginning. I was forced. I have this memory as a kid. Um, I had an auntie who had a fashion show and I was part of the fashion show. I was like six, seven years old and I had a lot of fun. Then that was the end of that. Yeah. Then I remember I got talking to Mr. Homo, get I to a hand push you. Let me say, most of the time I was pushed, but you know, mm. I, it's stuff I fell in love with mm. uh, going, mm. going in. Mm. It was like um, destiny to, a, to a point where it was just something that had to happen. Mm. It was just part of my journey. But uh, for me, it's, it's always been about just being very different because mm. I remember people don't need to understand that when I did when I released music or got into the music industry hip hop was not a popular genre yeah it wasn't at and, all, and, and, at and, all. and people felt well, one of the things that I would hear a lot about hip hop was the fact that it was boring mm. <laughs> it used to be that thing mm. yeah, <laughs> that <laughs> guys just stand there yeah. so I was trying to kill that thing no yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna come in and do hip hop and leave yeah. you entertained. Yeah, thoroughly entertained. Yeah. And w- while I was there, when I was with Ice Queen, it gave me the confidence. I think Ice Queen gave me a lot of confidence. Yeah. Ice Queen is over the top confident. Yeah. And she, she and and and, she and, and, and and she was telling me she told me about the elements of hip hop and she was telling me how important 
uh, b boys were yeah important as a part of the culture. Then you people. started doing it a little bit a, of pop locking. Yeah, so, yeah. so it was an element. She told me, well, this is uh, this are the elements of hip hop: DJing, mm. you know, spray painting, the fashion, the rhyming, the home. It all that's hip hop is a culture. Mm. Hip hop when you just talk, when you speak, rap is an element that can be used in kwaito and dancehall and other genres. Mm. So rap on its own is not hip hop. Mm. You understand? Mm. Hip hop is the dance, yeah, the culture, the MC, the DJ, mm. the DJ, the DJ gave birth to hip hop, yeah, yeah by yeah. literally using other genres, using the breaks in other genres. So you yeah. embrace you embrace the elements that came with hip hop and so, just moving around. Then also like the whole thing of you standing in front of people. That's the confidence as well. Yeah. confidence to be to try and be Mr. St. Yeah, Joe, yeah, Mr. Yeah, Yubi. Yeah, yeah. So a lot of confidence. A lot of confidence. Yeah, let, let me let me just... We're going to fast forward a bit because we're going to get into some juicy stuff. So that era, the early 2000s, so 2001 mm. to, to, to mid-2000s, that was big for you because you were just like... Yeah, like, from yo, yeah. Um, dude, at some point I was... That that space of time yeah. I started my career and it was just did you finish UB? I did eventually I got <laughs> I, I got my degree because I was in UB and I was by def, by, by Botswana standards I was like a mega superstar yeah By because I was performing every weekend I had like dude it was massive yeah Um. so what are you doing with the money now? like what's happening with the money? I don't know man I don't know. <laughs> I, we're staying in big houses. Nick and I, how can I move you? We're always staying in the big. We're always renting like really, really big, big houses. Know, way, yeah. way, way too big for us. Yeah. Um, our lifestyle was going to movies every day during the week because we didn't work anywhere. Yeah. Um, do uh, sh- when you're not rehearsing, you're watching movies. We're eating out all the time. Snap. Uh, no, yeah. No. Yeah. Uh, you know, we'd wake up, go to Wimpy, and then go for a movie. Go for for lunch um but it was fun man we yeah. learned a lot we know um yeah yeah i wish did you start gym there yeah around st- that time yeah yeah okay. i started gym uh around that time i got deep into gym because it was a big part of my the, the brand and the personality yeah, yeah. i need yeah. to get back to gym actually yeah, Speaking yeah. Of that, <laughs> you understand um, yeah um so we, we're one of the first artists to actually be really brand aware you yeah know? it was not just about the music it was about the brand and you know the image and yeah you know how to not go play okay. yeah. how did how did ranko come in play i mean you you, you released your your first album independently kind of i released my first single independently and then sang. i yeah. never remember i was lying to people oh, this is going to be an album yeah but it carried me for a while then i got approached by so hype yeah so hype uh yeah but he joined yeah yeah, yeah. Um, and then I signed with So Hype. Yeah. Recorded my first project, The yeah. Kiss. Um, the biggest song from The Kiss part is Bantuka. Yeah. Bantuka was the, was, was play, was, was, was me just playing around. Yeah. I remember the day I recorded Bantuka, I got a call from Marcy Antarno. Uh, I was like, okay, I'm going to go to the house. 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 I'm going to go to no, we're just gonna play around. So yeah. we're just testing the team. Don't worry. And I, at that time, uh, there was one of my favorite songs was about the uh, we are my brick and lace. Yeah, uh, wicked love is wicked. Love is wicked. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, 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 no. Yeah. That dance hall for you. I'm, yeah. a, I'm a big dance hall fan. Yeah, yeah. I love dance hall. Yeah. So I got those like, hey, let me think any that kind of feel. Dance hall. Yeah. And then we get, get, then I, how can I call you? Be um, I remember. I was in the room. I don't even know what I was doing in that room. Yeah. Then the other people were saying, yeah. so they were going to be picture and then some girl was saying, hey, I was like, 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 hey, and I remember, and you're like, who, who says that? And it just caught my, my, it was like, hey, and mm. I remember, Walking around there like some guy go, hello, my girl, and shake your bantu. Hello, so I remember. So I was like, yo, I'm gonna do that. Like, mm. so it was for me. I was not under pressure to do, to yeah. rap or almost just yeah. as playing. And I wouldn't. I didn't even think it was gonna be released. Yeah. So that's how we did bantu. Then they just released it. Hey, hey, no, no, we did that. Then we did. We kept coming, doing songs, doing songs. Yeah. Then when we were choosing songs, they chose hey, it. Hey, hey, hey. Uh, what this, some of the things they did was. 
they put a bunch of songs together then they would call guys from radio and djs to just listen to the project and even my film on my album mm. when I, there are reviews on my on, mm. of my mm. album different mm. people some mm. people say well this needs to improve but this one and for some reason Banduka just kept standing out people just liked the song mm. but it wasn't my first single people think it was my first single from the album oh okay okay my first single was a song called the the was song was, was a song called the cast Mm. The cast has come. come. All you niggas better yeah, recognize us to take over. Okay. Hey, so, that so that was more of my speed. Yeah. I was a bit more comfortable with that. Yeah, yeah. Dropped that single. It did really, really well. It did really well. Yeah. It, it was the song that went to number one in Ta, in Ta Oroko. Mm. So that was a feat. I was excited about that. Snap. Yeah. So we we we. Because Oroko was something else. It, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. his song was number one for the longest. Yeah, record label. Break, so they say, hey, 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 break through, hey, hey. break through, break hey, through. Hey. It was number one for like six, Talk for like ever. a long time. Hey. Then, then it was knocked off. Hey. Nice. Then it okay. stayed, it stayed, it stayed. Then we dropped Banduka. Ah, ah, like it changed my whole perspective on rapping and hip hop and home. Mm. Hey. Like if you don't like the commercial mm. cheesy mm. <laughs> version that cast is, mm. you you have Banduka to blame. Because <laughs> I was uncomfortable dropping that song, but that song became huge. To a point that I would go to Kuma Hying, and I would go to go people that know hip hop. Mm. I'd get but I don't know this server, and I was but home born. Really? Yeah, like it got to the point whereby it was, I was I was headlining shows. Sure. Like it got to that level. Yeah. Like people, you understand? Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. Then from so hype, you moved. Then from so hype. The reason I went to then I went to so then I left so hype after my first project. Then I were doing, I was working on. Um, we were working at the viewers working on this project to mm. Ramko. So w- w- I was doing, I featured Mohuku in Chile, bedroom politics, and I was mm. helping out with a few other things. Yeah. Go, so it was done, Kuala Ramko, the press beats, le, le, le goof. So mm. those were my P side guys. Mm, mm. So they're like, ah, well, I didn't do This is like P side. Yeah. So the, the people that called me to Ramko was not Ramko, it was press beats and goof. Okay. Yeah. Then they were like, no, let's just start recording. Can't somebody either could deal you take it from we'll, there. We'll figure yeah. it out. We did, as time yeah. Then we yeah. did Does It, then I signed the project. Yeah. yeah. Does It is uh, probably still, yeah, still the highest selling hip hop album in the country. How, how many units are you? Can we clocked on. over 10,000. I don't, the, 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 the thing that makes me sad about Does It is yeah. it was never certified, it was never official. It was always us knowing we sold this amount mm. then after that when there were certain disputes about yeah. the payout then yeah. it could not even be confirmed or so yeah. you can't uh, you can't confirm a certain amount because oh. that amount will, will mean you pay out a certain amount yeah so it was complicated that way but yeah. does it put pushed a lot of units did you have a no. pers- what was your percentage like in with the cut 20 percent you got 20 percent i didn't get it but you, you yeah. are supposed to get 20%. But, but, on pa- yeah, but on paper, it was supposed to be 20%. So, you yeah. know, but I got yeah. smart. At some point, I got a bit smart because yeah. every time I go to shows, I take uh, like box selling, I think 20 CDs. Yeah. I'd take a box of CDs and just go sell it and keep the cash. Yeah, and I, and it will always sell out. Like we show that box will always finish all the time. Snap, so man. That's like almost every yeah. weekend. You guys yeah. were busy. Like, you no, guys, every, yeah. almost every weekend. Well, you what watch. I did is happen now. I, I think I got smart really, really early. I did my own shows. Like, that when Desert came out, I did my own tour. Okay. Yeah, it was not even Remco. Like, I would organize, I would get venues, I would get dates, I would go to work, I would go all around the country doing shows. I remember around that time, like, mm. I don't know, you first started f- selling, I think 5,000 was the cap number where, mm. where if you get, if you sell big, you sell like 5,000 mm-hmm. for hip hop. Mm. And I used to tell Toba about it, like, yo, we need to sell 5,000. And 5,000, and that number came from SA, you know that. It was not even a Botswana number. Really? Yeah, the 5,000 number was a Botswana, it was not, it was an SA number. Meaning that SA is getting five thousand. Hey, hey, guys! I, come on, someone sold five thousand gold at around that time. Yeah, who sold five thousand? Someone sold five thousand units. Early hip hop, what they and it was like a thing. thing. It was a huge thing. Hey, it yeah. was a huge thing. I, for, I forgot yeah. who. It, I, yeah. I don't. I don't. You need to tell me who it was. Hey, I'll, 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 if I remember, uh, but yeah, I remember that whole conversation of five thousand. Yeah, because five thousand yeah. was like yeah. like platinum, yeah. and V used to sell that in a week, I think. V oh. sold. Uh, how much did you sell? He sold 10,000 in a week, less than two weeks. Yeah. I remember because he got a payout two weeks later after yeah. Kazi Angels. Yeah. Because yeah. Angels is his biggest selling, probably. Yeah, probably. Probably yeah. his biggest selling. And, uh, and yeah. 
and I'm very proud of that project because yeah, my contributions did really, really well in the nice, project too. Nice, nice, yeah. nice. I feel like just the the industry establishments in the back end helping people who wrote who have mm. credits that should have helped. That should have mm. like should have always been there. We're young, and we, guys, we, yeah. we're young, and we didn't. We, it was not important, and it was not even official. You understand? Yeah. I th- I think creatives sometimes feel creatives, especially there's this culture, especially with hip hop collaboration in terms of uh, writing is looked down at. Yeah. You know, there's still that strong culture. So, okay, so you didn't sell, you didn't, who got, who, it's controversial, but. It's very controversial. Okay. And, 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 and I, I don't want to get, I, I, I don't want to point fi- fingers and blame yeah. anyone else. Cause yeah. you know, um, yeah, it's, 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 it was one of those Has things. This, it's soured relationships, of course. No, no, not really. Um, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm proud. I've always been able to manage relationships and even when I was not happy with how certain things are done with someone, but I would always okay. I, yeah. I, I, I move on and I just try and be cordial and, and cool with, it, with everyone. Yeah. So yeah, the shows, were you, were you keeping most of your show earnings? Or yeah, I was, doing, I was doing my own shows. I was okay. literally just doing my own shows. Yeah. If um, I remember um, Lady Khamagila for a while. Mm. Lady Khama in it was because of one of my launches. There mm. were too many people. They just started breaking stuff. Yeah, you guys don't have a cap. You guys don't have sold out. That's the biggest problem with yeah. guys Because we cause cause you like the gate. We didn't print no not pre sales. Yeah. So people who showed up would want to come in. Yeah. So yeah. Hey, I'm I'm here. I need to yeah. Th- that's the biggest problem though. If yeah. we have this whole this is the cap, this is what we then mm. I think it makes it makes yeah. these shows make sense. There's less yeah. violence. There's more order. There's yeah, a lot yeah, of other yeah, things. Yeah, but yeah. guys want to have. As many yeah, <laughs> I, I, I was telling someone recently about if I do when not if when I do the next big event. Yeah. I I don't want ticket sales on the day of the event. Yeah. Because ticket sales on the day of the event just complicate every single yeah. thing. Yeah. If anything, it, you'd have a point of sale somewhere at Kagala, but not at the venue. Okay. Yeah, like yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. Like sales at the venue and the home are just complicated. Like people don't understand managing events and shows, these large scale events is such is the trickiest thing you can do. Yeah, and it's easy to make a loss. You can fill up a big venue and still make a loss. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, let's. So okay, cool. So that was a big time. You guys are making money and whatnot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Ramco um, now, what's your public image? Are you guys looked at as heroes? Are you guys become villains? Like I think we're still heroes. I think people still still think very fondly of Ramco Loco. Yeah. When they think of it, because we we created so many memories. We, it was such a big movement, and uh, it stopped weirdly. It didn't need to stop when it stopped. It yeah. Really, I just feel like we have as a uh, mind, but I still have this mindset of something becoming too big. Mm. Like we support something, but uh, when it gets to a certain thing, we wanna. There's this glass ceiling where yeah, you, I get you, you. you can't break through and it's, I get you. it's a psychological thing that we yeah. have as much. I, I, I love that you can still be critical and patriotic, patriotic at the same time. Yeah. Where does that come from though? Like you can still say, ah, chief, you've done that to me. Yeah. I remember we first recorded out the Excalibur project hmm. and I think I gave it for you to listen. Hmm. You, you took it around and we sat down and it was just like, yo man, what do you, what do you think? What do you think? And you're like, okay, and this is what I like about it, man. I, I think this, this, and this, and this, and this. And I'm like, you know what? I, I like that. I like I like hearing that. Mm. I might not take everything you are saying, yeah. but I like the fact that you took time to kind of understand where we are coming from and just sh- give me your perspective. Mm-hmm. I, I think we, we tend to not uh, understand how valuable ta- people's times are exactly. and take people's time for granted. I try my best to like, like even now, like with everything, just making sure that I'm making people's time valuable, mm-hmm. and and that that's really, that's really dope. So yeah, critic, you're critical at the same time. Now I'm also seeing a, ca- a quality in you where you're critical at the same time, but you can still praise, you can still love. So I, this new generation, they, there's a lot of if you're critical, that means you hate. Mm-hmm. That means you 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 don't yeah. yeah, you don't yeah. Like you don't you do you don't have you don't you don't love me mm-hmm. you, yeah but you don't just don't like this one little thing mm-hmm. of it like what, what 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 what's your thought on criticism criticism is like one of the most valuable thing you can ever get in this space because it's i keep telling people that you know like this big companies about apple about coco they spend so much money on research and finding out what people think yeah you know so criticism is like getting that for free oh it's like you know, because 
Because ultimately you are in a space of perception. How people perceive you and see you yeah. is it's 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 your money. It's your yeah. it's, it's 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 basically how you are valued as a person. And uh for you to make moves and change and home, you need to have that information. You need self awareness yeah. is very, very important. So you're the one of the most well where I don't know because maybe you've been quiet, people have been cooling down. Yeah. You were at one stage one of the most criticized people. Yeah. Um like Okay, let's let's just talk about how you came up with the Tlatsa, uh idea and all of that. Like, what 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 was going on through your mind? Like, what happened? It's, there? it's nothing complicated, actually. Yeah. Um, when people forget that, um, Kes, Kesper yeah announced and about the the dome concept, yeah. I think a few weeks less than a month later. Yeah. I announced that I wanted to fill up the stadium. Yeah, people. So he announced bef- after. I announced after Casper. Um, yeah, I think some of the criticism comes. So people, from it only popularized when uh, people people have this memory mm. of me. Uh, they think that Casper filled up the dome. Then I saw that. Then I felt like I can do something similar. Yeah, but that's was inspired by the fill up movement. Yeah, one hundred percent. I've always said that. Yeah, that's was uh, if. Casper had not announced, we probably wouldn't have class. Okay. Legit. Yeah. So he announced, and I'm thinking, this is this kid. This kid is like, I'm probably 10 years older than that kid. Yeah. Which I call my feet game. Yeah. And the but reason you're calling him kid is this guy's looked up to you guys. Yeah. Like he's always he's come to. Yeah. And, and looked up to you. Let me give me Ziga Touch. Because mm. he was always moving around the touch. He was always trying to perform more around him. Yeah. He was always coming to the touch. Yeah. So yeah. He, 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 so I'm looking mm. at this guy. He's blowing up. But yeah. this small old town, smaller than games. Yeah. And he's such, he's, he has this ambition to do this amazing thing. Yeah. For me, that's really inspiration. I'm like, and I remember this conversation. Yeah. I was always getting into this argument. Yeah. Uh, uh, the local artist digger that's a stadium. Yeah, it's an old conversation. It's an old, co- I remember yeah. that one. Yeah, and guys were always saying, well, and most people were always saying, well, ah, I, I was one of the few people who'd say, No, but it's possible. Was yeah, one. so my, my, my belief has always been with agents. Like, what the music is not where it should be, but you want to tell me whether well, if you get a V, you get a Frank, we get a Mama, we can't fill up a stadium. Mm. For me, it was always for me, it was always a very clear thing. Yeah, so I announced, and there was a lot of. Mm. And for me, it was a positive thing because um, in this space, mm. you need feedback, mm. not only positive feedback. You need mm. people. When people, when you say something, people are quiet. The worst thing that could ever happen to you in this industry mm. is when people are not talking about you. Yeah, cool, cool, yeah, cool, yeah. cool, cool. So as mm. soon as that happened, I anticipated because Nikki be like, "Oh, okay, I want to fill up the national stadium." Yeah, but how did you? Oh, okay. So yeah. that was purpose. Okay, yeah. continue. They get to like a boom conversation. I would even share some of the criticisms. Because ah, my people with that community were like, imagine never got that. And I was, you know, for me, it was getting the conversation out there. Yeah. Then later, I, was, I clarified because no, um, I don't want to do a one man show mm. because the cast event was more of like a one man show. Yeah. I want to do an industry wide thing. Yeah. Yeah. Some people so were like, the, the, the idea started developing. Yeah, then some people were like, hey, then some people were like, oh, okay, 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 okay. Then I can't want to push again. But even if I wanted to do it alone, Matataki in. Because I was just for me, it was about a mind. The first that was about a mindset shift, mm. changing perspectives of breaking mm. through that glass ceiling. Yeah. yeah. So, I hear you, uh, man. so, so the criticisms came, and for me, I was expecting them. So, why people, people think I'm. Um, I have tough skin for sure. Yeah. But at the same time, I was not surprised. Oh. The feedback was anticipated. It was uh, not only anticipated, but expected. Not only expected, but I was hoping for that kind of feedback. That I didn't know. That yeah. I didn't know. That I didn't Cause know. Because people are really, people are not comfortable with their skin. Too. You knew that people, people are going to hate. Yeah. People, dude, I needed people to hate. Because if people did not hate it, was not going to get any traction. Do you know why in 2018, after we filled up the stadium in yeah. in 2017, we couldn't fill it up in 2018? Yeah, yeah. Because there were no haters. It was quiet. There was no hype. I was working for the second time. People knew. I have a different, I've got a different analysis yeah. of that. Yeah. We'll, we'll just talk about it. I felt like the branding was... was Like you were saying too many things. The marketing was cluttered. 
That's what I thought. I felt mm. like you were saying many things at the same time. You're saying, okay, one of them. Okay, there's this society. Okay, there's this, there's this, there's it this. It wasn't actually. That was the perception. Yeah. Um, the way, that was the perception. I would agree with you in the point of saying it was not a sexy campaign in the sense that yeah. you had to apply your mind to it. Yeah. But it was a simple campaign. Yeah. We are working to advocate for the formation of the National Arts Council. Full yeah. stop. No, but there was, I felt like there were so many other things. But that, to but that was the only... There was CAS Foundation. There was this, the, no, that's no, no, no. It felt, we, felt never mentioned, we never mentioned CAS Foundation in that campaign. Yeah. We literally say, well, initially it was supposed to be a relay. Yeah. It was supposed to be a relay. Yeah, the artistic working to get and to advocate for the National Arts Council. Yeah. It was, uh, that was the beginning and end of it. Yeah. But because it was not a sexy campaign, because we'd post and, and explain to people what Arts Council benefit about Tuyana and yeah. Yeah. So it's content, it's not a sexy campaign. Yeah. That was one. But believe me, if that campaign was the first in the era 2017, in the Arts Council. Mm. But yeah. you had letters. There was, a, there was once an open letter. I don't know if it was a journalist or some guy. He just wrote, he wrote, put all your names out there. He says, oh, whatever you call yourself. Quit. I don't know why. Like he wrote like a whole letter. People, if you remember with 2017, there were, was, I know, cast saga. Yeah. There were, there were so many sagas. You yeah. understand? And, and, and people were were tuned in, yeah, and paying attention. Yeah, with the second one, there wasn't a lot of there wasn't a lot of conversation. There wasn't a lot of drama. Yeah. Okay, but okay. I was expecting it. I was I would be surprised here and there. Yeah, but for me, man, I've, I've always said, uh, right is right. If you are doing the right thing, mm. you don't need cheerleading. Yeah, how you ask it doesn't have to have a lot of support as long as you you know you are legitimately doing it. And even when people say. People always put bad things on your name. You know? Yeah, but I feel like there was this time where they said, I mean, coming fast forward, like mm. super fast forward, Franco wants to fill up the stadium. Mm. Then that, that article, I felt like that article, it, I don't know, it just didn't feel like you, came, it came from you, mm. and also felt like it was a hit piece. It just felt like somebody, it was. It, it felt like somebody was paid because I think you're right about this hater thing. Without an enemy for Franco to fill up that stadium because he can, he can, hundred percent. No, no let, one's doubting. Let, let Franco, me, uh, let me let me tell you, uh, like, I've I've been Franco in the studio. That guy is super smart. He's intelligent. And you know, he speaks like six languages or something like that. Uh, he speak, like, I know he speaks French. He speaks French, Swahili, Kalanga, Swana, English. That guy is crazy. Uh, and I know he can fill up. He's 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 smarter than everyone mm -hmm. of us. But I'm not saying he did it. But I felt like. Somebody just 